Yo, what's up guys? It's DJ Rick Webb. Welcome back to the channel. You guys saw the thumbnail today. We're building another wireless battery power ceremony system um, because we're expanding and I need to get another system put into place. If you guys saw the original video, the first ever one I made, it was honestly overkill. That one, there's only one of those in existence and Marcellus has it and we're thinking about changing it over to the new system. And this is actually gonna be the third generation of the battery powered ceremony systems that we're using. So before I get into this build right here, um, we're gonna talk about ceremony rack number two, version number two. If you guys go check out version one, I'm gonna show you two and then we're gonna build version three right here, which I think is gonna be, at this point, it's gonna iron out all of the kinks and be the most versatile and useful system that we got. So let's go look at version two. So coming down in our gear storage area, we have this one right here. We actually, this we have uh, two of these in existence. Um, we have, this is gonna be the fourth mic rack that we're building back here. Marcel's currently owns, he bought the first generation that I built. The second generation is this one right here. We have two of these. Ralph has one right now, and this is the other one. So you guys see this is now, instead of the 6U, this is a 4U. So it's smaller, more portable, awesome. Up top here, powering the whole system, we still have a battery power system. This is from Colorado Sound and Light. It is not just a StarTech power strip. Colorado Sound and Light put this amazing battery power system into it, which is actually super cool because it is a safety in a way too. So if you're running on bat or you're running on like hardwire power, I'll show you in the back, there's a power cable for it. And let's say someone unplugs your power, this thing will automatically switch over to battery and keep your shit running. Or you can just run it off of battery like this. Bottom is charged, middle is off, and the top is your battery backup system. As you can see, it powers up our mics. Mics of choice, Audio Technica 3004th gen. Same mics we use in everything. Um, I think the Company, between all the DJs, we probably have 15, 12, 15 or 20 of these now. We have a 2U rack drawer here. It holds our two lapels, two handhelds. That way the system is versatile. You can use it for the reception or you can use it for the ceremony. Two lapels down here. We have our nice little dead cat filters in case we are in a windy environment outdoors. Extra batteries. We need to get some more in this case so we'll be ready to go for the next events. Shut that up. Coming around the back here, it's um, pretty straightforward. We have a custom plate here made. Uh, this was just a blank plate, and we're gonna be doing this exact same one for this build today, so you guys are gonna see how this works. Basically, these are our antennas, our nice big half-wave antennas. Inside of here, you can see these are our mic combiners. So what it does is it takes the antennas from both of these, combines them, and then we run them on these half-wave antennas. Very similar if you just saw the video where uh, we built uh, Ralph's 1000 SRT case. Same sort of concept where we basically take the two mics, combine them together with these passive combiners, and then we use the half-wave antennas. The Audio Technicas come with quarter-wave antennas at first, so they're basically like the little tiny ones. When you do a passive, you do lose uh, your gain, like your gain um, to basically get reception. By doing this and upgrading to the half wave antennas, basically we're keeping the same level of uh, pickup from the original mics. Very tactical. So coming out of the back of it, we have a power cable that we don't necessarily need, but we can if we want. And we have a power cable for our mixer, which is over here and we have these cool little bags. I'll link all this in the description. We're gonna be using a lot of this in the other video as well. We have these cool bags that hold our Yamaha MG06 FX mixers. That's what we use for all of our ceremonies. Good to go. And I kind of skipped over where this power cable comes from, but it comes from the battery backup system that's tucked up in here. And honestly, what you guys need to do is go check out the video I made on the original one that goes over the wiring diagram of how that works. Basically, the power goes into the battery system and then there's leads that come out of the battery that plug into the mic and plug into the mixer, which we have tucked here because the mixer is not built in. In the first generation we built, it was a 6U case, go check out the video, but the mixer was actually built into it. So you pulled out the drawer and the mixer was right there. Kind of cool. In the new ones, we don't have that because we want to make it more flexible. And what I mean by that is, is this is not like very quick and easy to set up a ceremony. I mean, it is, but compared to the first generation, this is a little slower. You have to plug in your XLRs to your mics. So we have to plug in our XLRs right here. We got to plug them into that one, plug them into that one. It, it's really easy to get your hand in there and plug those in. Um, but you got to plug both your mics in, plug them into the mixer. It takes a few seconds, but the beauty of that is now, instead of it being built into the mixer, we can take these mics and go use them with our reception setup very easily so literally we just hook up those same XLRs we just run them to whatever board we're using for the reception that way we can use our mics for both but this system is version 2 it was more versatile allowing you to quickly plug in your mics for two different things if you need it instead of having a built-in mixer and running a mixer into a mixer 
it gets a little complicated. But this is version two and version three that we're building is very similar, except some differences on the battery. Oh, and if I haven't mentioned already, all of these systems, we use this speaker right here. This is our uh, fifth one I bought, I think. The LD Systems Maui 40, or yeah, those are the big boys. This is the LD Systems Maui 5 Go. It's a battery powered speaker. It has like eight hours of battery minimum. It's perfect if you guys are doing ceremonies, cocktails. It has Bluetooth built into it. Uh, this speaker is by far my go-to for anything where we need battery or just a quick like background level sound. It's beautiful. These sticks come apart, they go into bags. Eight inch sub down there, nice bass. Uh, the battery lasts forever. It's just a beautiful speaker. Uh, there's Bluetooth connectivity as well. So for cocktail, you can just hook up your um, iPad, iPod, whatever you got, play your cocktail mix, super easy. But let's get into the mic rack gen three three that we are building today. Everything that's going into it is on this table. Let me take you through what all we're gonna be using. So of course we need a case. Case of choice is the SKB for you rack. So that is going to be our case of choice. It's a slim, so it takes up minimal footprint. It's a plastic shell case, so it's lighter than, say, a wood metal case. Um, beautiful for portability. We are going to be using, again, two Audio-Technica 3000 4th Gen lapels. Um, those are in these cases right here. Battery powered for this system. Um, well, we'll get to that in a second. You already know what it is. But right here we have just a standard... StarTech power strip, no battery powered from Colorado Sound and Light, so just a standard one. We have our combiner plate that allows us to mount both of those together. We have our wireless, um, our half-wave antennas. I don't have it over here, it's over there, but the passive mic combiners are over there. We have our port mounts, so these are what's going to mount to this 1U Blinks plate right here to be able to put those half-wave antennas on the back of the rack. Yamaha MG06 effects. We have a bag for that as well right here and um, power that goes with that. Battery power for this rig, what I figured out, and this is more expensive. This is definitely more expensive than the Colorado Sound and Light version. Don't quote me, but I think it's just over $100 for this, for the battery powered system. Maybe it's somewhere between like 150, I know it's under $200, I think. Don't quote me on that, but I'll link it in the description down below. It's definitely a cheaper option to go with. But this guy right here, a lot of people, you might have been seeing this online, are ranting and raving about this Jackery battery. And this is the Jackery Explorer 300. I believe this thing costs like $300, so it's not cheap at all. What I love about this, is we've taken the battery out of the rack which makes it more versatile to use for other things so instead of having the battery built into our case like our second gen over here and also a side note whenever you want to charge this battery we have to take the back off of it and plug this in before our gigs and charge it up and make sure it's all charged and ready to go. Now it's separate from the case. So the cases can sit on the shelves at all times and we can have these batteries in a separate area of the garage just easily able to charge them up. So that is one plus, it's separate. So that way it's easier to charge. Two, we can use it for multiple things. If we wanna power a laptop, a light, we can do it with this thing. That's actually one plus side of this over the built-in system is this, I can plug in the rack and I can plug in my laptop and have both of them powered during the ceremony. And this thing has like loads of power. There's actually a lower end model and I would highly recommend getting the lower end model because this thing is honestly overkill with how much battery power it has, the 300. There is a cheaper one, I think it's like 220-ish. But yeah, the Jackery battery, uh, I've been using it for the last um, three months, just using it for random things. We've actually been powering the ceremony rig. So my ceremony rig, instead of actually using the Colorado battery in it, we've been plugging it in just to see how well this Jackery performs. And from what I'm finding, when we're powering, again, we're not powering a speaker because the LED is battery powered, but when we're powering our whole entire mic rack and we're powering a laptop, this thing can do literally hours. Like I'm talking eight, 10 hours of this power and all that. This thing has plenty of battery. Normally, the last ceremony I did, we started music an hour and a half early. Don't ask me why, but we played music for literally two and a half hours, and this thing had, I think, 73% battery after basically two and a half hours. So it's got loads of power. We've used it at the wedding show to power laptops and my light ring because it was more convenient. Just wanted to see what it could do, and it lasted four hours powering a light ring and two laptops. So that is why we're going with the Jackery. There's a lot of benefits from a versatility standpoint, and I highly recommend you consider them for your business because they're just dope like literally i take this thing everywhere 
Like literally, I can plug my phone in, it's got, um, that's one thing that's cool about this. I'm talking a lot about the Jackery, but this thing is literally dope. One thing I forgot to mention, this is actually a lithium ion battery. So this is not like your standard car battery in here. This thing is designed to power electronics. You can see it's got a display on it too. So it'll tell you how much your output is, how much your input is, It can if you're charging it. It'll tell you how much charge is left in a percentage, which is super clutch. Um, you can plug in DC power here, it's got one of those if you ever need it but it's got two AC plugs down here you turn it on right there it's a 110 volt 300 watts 300 watts is a lot of power it's got USB type C output so you can plug in USB type C it's got five volt outputs and right there's your input so this thing is sick but anyways enough rambling on let me guys let me put you guys up on the tripod and we're gonna get started with this the first thing we're gonna be doing is basically hooking up our power strip and getting our mics mounted into the rack oh I forgot I need my gator shelf. Yeah, so I completely forgot. You also need a 2U uh, gator rack. This, well, you don't have to buy gator, but the gator rack works. That's what I'm using. That's what I've used in all of them. It's a shallow mount 2U drawer. It's where we hold all the mics in the bottom of this. So we're gonna be mounting this. We're gonna be mounting these, and we're gonna be mounting the power strip into this, and then we'll start wiring everything up. What's up guys, in the office, before we get back to the ceremony rack build, I want to tell you guys about today's sponsor, Request Now. I know DJs, especially myself, hate requests, but Request Now is a way to automate your requests. Basically, at your events, you're gonna have a side window pulled up where all of those requests are gonna funnel into on your computer, or you can have them up on your phone too. You can easily go through and you can check them off as you go through them, you can delete them, etc. It's very easy and very intuitive to use. But beyond that, the coolest part about it is the automational side. You can set up automated responses and at the end of the night, you can blast out basically all of your contact information. Basically, a little thank you, like thank you for coming to so-and-so's wedding, thank you for coming to the school dance, hope you guys had fun. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, go to our website, etc. Basically, you can blast out whatever you want. You can set up auto responses when people text in their request, and it gives you a cool marketing tool and a branding tool to basically hand out those virtual business cards to everyone that kind of interacts with you in terms of requesting a song, which is super dope. But if you guys want some more details on requests now, I made a full video going over the dashboard, how it all works. I'll link in the description down below, but also Request Now is the sponsor of today's video, so they have created a special little discount link that'll also be in the description down below if you guys wanna check it out. Thank you again, Request Now, for sponsoring today's video. Let's get back to the ceremony rack. So as you saw, I opened up and got the rack mounted in here. I always put the lock in here, only because this little plastic latch tends to fail over time. Just a little pro tip for you guys. It is a plastic latch, so having this lock that actually locks it so it doesn't open. Normally that little plastic latch here, that'll break over time. This metal key lock, that won't break over time. So just a little pro tip there. Always put the lock in there and then just leave the key in there. Don't take the key out. The, the case front will fit with the key in there. And then I went ahead and unboxed uh, the microphones. This is actually the stuff we're not using. Each one of these mics comes with a long rack mount. So that way, if you're using just one in a standard rack, this is your blank plate. And they come with the two little ones. We're gonna use those two little ones with our combiner plate, which is over there. We don't need our quarter wave antennas. These are the small ones I was talking about that come with the mics, because we're gonna be doing the passive combiners, which are in this box right here. Passive combiners, that's that plate I was just mentioning. And we're gonna go to the big boy half wave antennas instead. So all of this is going to basically, um, we're not using. So I'm gonna put that with basically all of my extra parts that lay in this bin over here. This is just my little excess part bin. There's there's all kinds of stuff in here. Uh, we got our two lapels right here, good to go, brand spanking new. Now what we're gonna be doing is flipping both of these over and we are going to remove the feet. They're just Phillips screwdrivers. And then we're going to put our combiner plate on here and use the screws that are included with the plate right here to put the plate on. And then the screws that come with the mics right here, we're gonna use those to mount our little sides on either well, these little sides on either side. Sides on either side, you know, English, it's wonderful. But mount all that together, that way we can just slide it in, mount it up, good to go, and then we also gotta open up the power strip. And there we have it. The front is fully assembled, and that was 
the easiest thing ever. Uh, if you guys didn't know, these are very easy. You just screw them into the according spots on the sides. Um, but unbox the Star Trek Power Ship. As you can see, it does not have the battery in between there because we're using the Jackery. Let me go ahead and flip this over and let's get to the fun of wiring. Yay. And this is what we are working with. So we have the back of the mics here. What we have to do is combine our antennas. So we're going to put um, your antenna B to B, A to A with the antenna combiners. I'll show you that in a second. And we got to plug everything in, which we're going to be plugging up the two Audio Technica power and we're gonna plug in the Yamaha power and we're just gonna do the same thing we did on the uh, version two and we're just gonna run that little power cable over to here and it'll be hanging out the back to plug in the Yamaha when we need to plug it in. So that's what we're gonna do for that and we have to assemble the 1U plate afterwards to mount the antennas up here on the top. So here's all the mic antenna parts unboxed for you guys. So we have the 1U backplate like you've seen on version two. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drill holes to be able to mount these right here on the back. So these are gonna mount through here so that way we can hook up our half wave antennas. Little side point, these half wave antennas come with these little tiny washers and what those are gonna do is go right there on our connection. We're gonna go right on top of that and what that's gonna do is provide a little friction so that way these things will actually wanna sit upright when we assemble them and when they go sideways they sit as well. This right here is the combiner stuff. So we, we have uh, four antenna cables. So these are gonna hook into these. So all four are gonna hook into these and they're gonna go to these right here which are our T combiners. So like I said, this is a passive system. So these are passively connected so there's no power going to it. If you guys are wondering, if you're running more than two mics in like this sort of scenario, a lot of times we'll use a active combiner. So a lot of times when you guys see like those big racks that have like 16 mics in there, they're all going into an active combiner. A lot of times, actually, I think they're limited to like four, maybe per cell, and they have different active combiners for all of them. Not entirely sure. I'm not too into the really expanses of microphone technology and all that, but an active combiner requires power. So you power the combiner and the combiner will amplify the signal to then send to the antenna. So you get more power, more um, transmission for better signal, better coverage with your mics. Have you ever seen the fins? like those big fins, a lot of times they're using an active combiner for their mics. So this is a passive system and the whole point or the whole reason for doing a passive system in this scenario is one, you don't need the extra rack space. Uh, an active combiner will take a whole nother rack space. And two, by doing this, uh, we're also trying to reduce the amount of power that we're drawing. So that way we can do this battery powered. So, and also we're, we're keeping the same level of stock and this is it's all you need. For a mobile DJ, mobile ceremony, you don't need an active combiner if you're only running two mics. Now, if you're running four, you need an active combiner, but two, you're fine. So let's get back to it. I'm gonna go ahead and wire all this up for our mics. So there we go, using those power jumpers, all of our powers up here and I zip tied the XX slack that's gonna be down there. All I need to make sure I keep open is access to be able to plug in either the quarter inch or the three quarter, or the, the DMX, or, yeah, XLRs based in here. You could, and it's actually something we'd be considering, is on this back plate right here that we're using, so this is gonna go right here, is we could go ahead and permanently either hook up some XLRs to these, or run to an XLR plate back here. That way we're still versatile. And I talked about in the 1000 SRT case build, you really don't want to be uh, using these plugs as much as possible. You wanna kinda route these to an external XLR. So that way down the line, if anything is to wear out, you want it to be an external plug. So that way it's really easy to fix. If so, for some reason that over time wears out and say you break one of those pins, well, you either have to bite the bullet and disassemble the whole thing and try and do it yourself, which really isn't that hard if you know what you're doing, or you got to send this thing in for maintenance. And if that happens at an event, you're fucked. If you run the basically the XLRs to a outside port of some sort, then if that breaks at an event, well, you just unplug that and plug in a straight cable and you're good to go. So thinking about backup is something I do a lot with these cases. From a standpoint of assembling them and building them, it's a lot simpler to just do this and have it plugged in there, but it's something that we're considering for down the line. We're also considering 
just having XLRs plugged in at all time. And then at the end of the night, you just kind of push the cables in there and you're good to go. And that might be something we do. We don't know yet, but that right there, we're gonna move on to drilling the holes for our antennas. So moving over to the workbench, if you could tell by my workbench, I've been doing a lot of shit. So <laughs> use the mess, but we're gonna be uh, taking the drill with our metal drill bits. They're, they're tapered drill bits, so they have multiple depths and we're gonna drill holes on either side for those mic port mounts. So this is the 1U port fully assembled. So as you saw, I drilled the holes in it and then we passed these through, tied them down, and that's that. So now these are gonna connect to those and that is gonna be our antenna system and then we'll mount this on the back and we'll be done. Before I go ahead and screw on the plate, just wanted to show you guys kind of the wire management, zip tied them together, that way they all stay together nice and good. And now we're gonna basically screw on the back plate and the rack is done except for putting the mics and storing them in the one or the two U shelf down here and we gotta install the mic. So I guess we're not done yet, but we're in terms of assembly portions, like actually screwing in things, we're pretty much done. And there you have it, all done. All the wiring is nice and clean, easily can access our ports to plug in our XLRs, and we're good to go. So now we're gonna finish off by uh, putting our little washer here and our antennas on the back. And like I mentioned, this is pretty straightforward, but it's actually a little tricky. So you have to put the washer, I put the washer on here, just like that. And then I'm gonna put this on. So it should push the washer down in just like that, so the washer pushes down in, and now I should be able to put the mic on, just like that. And what that does is it allows it to have friction so it doesn't want to move easily. There's mic one, or mic antenna one. Now we'll put the other washer on. Actually, just to show you guys, I'm gonna put this on without the washer to show you guys how um, loose this is. So when I push this one, that's all it goes. When I push this one, it's kind of hard to notice, but that actually does not want to hold where it's at. This, on the other hand, you can see when I'm whacking this, it stops like instantly. So there's a little pro tip for you guys. If you ever get these half wave antennas, put the little washer down in there. This little rubber guy right here, and that'll keep your mic antenna sticking up nice and good. So just use it to push it down in and I always like to take it off and check it to make sure it is going down in perfectly It's not getting kinked or anything. There we go Lock that in boom antennas on the back and you might have noticed it But I always put like a little red zip tie here so that way it's easy to find but this is the cord That'll lay back here when we shut the case and our power cable for the power strip as well and Then you put the back on it and you're good So another thing I really forgot to mention was the foam insert. So this right here is the foam insert um they don't, it's not included with um, the rack shelf here. So I will link where you can get the foam insert. It's actually bigger than the shelf. You have to cut it down to size, but it's actually made up of these cubes. If you've ever seen it before, where you can literally cut out and break out exactly what you need. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and mount in here my two lapels and I'm going to mount in a spot, cut out a spot for those two and for these. So that way it's all buried nicely in the case and good to go. And that right there is the shelf, guys. I was actually looking. I could, if I wanted to, cut out the foam and put my Yamaha mixer in the drawer as well to keep it even more compact. The reason why I'm not gonna do that is because, like I said, versati versatile, like everything being very versatile, uh, having these separate actually is very beneficial for us because we use these things for more than just our ceremonies So having it separate in our little awesome cases here does actually benefit us in our scenario But in your case possibly this might make more sense to put this in here and then keep all of your cables that you're gonna need your aux cable to plug in your laptop your XLRs that connect your mics to keep it all in here and then all you have to do to take to your ceremony is this and the Maui that's all you gotta take, and it will literally be three things. Oh, and you gotta take a Jackery too, so.
there's that. But um, unless you get the battery backed up. So if you get like our version two where the battery's built in here, then literally you would take this case and you'd be good to go. But in my scenario, we're not gonna have that in there. This is gonna be a spare spot right here that I can put additional stuff. You can also consider if you're, this one's gonna be my personal one, so I don't need any handhelds in here. But if you saw in version two, there's handhelds in there too, so that way they can use it for reception or ceremony. So there's a lot of flexibility and these really come down to how you need them to perform to maximize the efficiency of your setups. For us, most of us have our handhelds already built into our rigs, so these are purely used for ceremony only. But in the case of the rack I just showed you, that's pretty much Drake's rack that he takes out, and Drake doesn't have two mics in his reception setup. So he has to use it for both ceremony and reception. So there's that. So that right there, though, is the complete ceremony build. So that's it. I'm not going to set it up. If you guys want to see uh, this fully set up at events, you're going to have to stay tuned to one of the upcoming gig logs to watch this. Or just tune into pretty much any of the gig logs to see the previous versions. But the upcoming gig logs, you will see this brand new version for me at all of my events. So anyways, guys, I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. Enjoy the build out of the SKB case here for our ceremony rigs. Um, I hope it was beneficial to you guys. If you guys got any questions, any questions at all, leave them down in the comment section down below. If you guys are new here, I answer every single question you guys answer on here. Or if you want to ask me a private question, do it on Instagram at DJ Rick Webb. I respond to all of my DMs. If you ask me a question there, I'll respond. I'm friendly. I'm nice. I like to give back and that's what it's all about. Like the video, comment down below, hit the subscribe button if you're new around here and keep them record spinning guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.